Hey guys, so in this video, we're going to go over the finish section of the panel. So at the very bottom, you're going to see the buttons that appear on every page. So you still have your undo, redo, transform, levels, curves, layer mask, save button, and then delete button as well. But at the top now, you're going to see that we have a resize button. So with this button, you can quickly resize your document and change the dimensions or the resolution. We also have these color profile buttons at the top so you can quickly change your document's color space just by clicking a button. So if we want to change this to sRGB from Adobe RGB, we just click the button and it's done. Underneath those buttons, you see the save file as. So we can select our destination folder or where we want to save our files just by clicking this folder icon here and then picking the folder that we'd like them saved to and then clicking open. And then we can rename the file if we'd like right here. Or just keep it the same it's going to by default be the document's name and once we click jpeg or png or tiff or psd or psb it's going to save the file as this format to this folder that we select if you click jpeg then it's going to be a full resolution jpeg with the color space embedded so this is great if you need to print and then below this we have the save for web functions so here you're just going to select the number and then put in the dimensions that you'd like it saved on the long end so for example if we have a horizontal photo like this and landscape orientation then 2048 pixels will be the long end dimensions then we can also set the quality here and i just leave mine at 100 usually and then we can select whether we'd like to save this as a jpeg or a png and it's going to also go to this folder that we have selected with the name that we have here. One handy feature of the Save for Web is going to be the sharpening. So we have a drop down menu here that you can select the strength of the sharpening if you want for Save for Web. And this is an intelligent sharpening function that actually masks out the edges. So you don't wind up with any unwanted halos in your final pictures. And lastly, we get down to the watermark section, which is super handy if you use a watermark because this will actually save your watermark within the document and also save your settings here as well. So one thing to note is that your folder will actually be saved as well and your settings here. So basically, if you're doing the same exact type of saving every time, you can always save it back to the same folder or change it on the fly and save for web also at the same dimensions every time as well. So to select your watermark, you're just going to double click in that box there and then basically go to your watermarks folder or wherever you have your watermarks at. Select your watermark and then click open and then your watermark preview appears here. So to apply the watermark, you simply need to go to your anchor point drop down and select where you want the watermark to appear. So if we want it in the top left corner, we would select here. If we wanted it in the bottom right corner, we would select right here. Or for instance, if we wanted it in the middle section somewhere, we would select in the middle. So I'm going to put mine in the top left. I'm going to change the opacity to about 40%, which is pretty much standard for me. And as far as the scale goes, I think I'm going to apply this at about 30% of the size. And you can always change this. And then just click Apply. And it puts your watermark right wherever you selected the anchor point. One cool thing is that because we have this Transform tool here at the bottom, you can simply just click the Transform tool and move the watermark or resize it if needed and just click enter to change the position or the size of the watermark. So that's pretty much it for the finished section guys. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I will get back to you.